Good morning. Greg is getting our bear bags down. It's hard to see because it's still dark out. But this branch was the only branch around our tenting area. So we threw the bags up and oh, we just crossed our fingers that a smart bear didn't come around. And we didn't hear any bears, but we sure heard a lot of coyotes howling all night long. Scaring me, making it hard to sleep. We're getting an early start, as you can see. Well, looks like we aren't the only ones who decided another eight miles was too much. We're back on the trail. Got a nice early start today. Yeah, we got an early start. Uh, we have, I think, eight or nine miles to the first shelter option, and then there's a couple after that, so. We got a few options today. I think our first goal of the day though is to try to find water. Yes, we have about half of a water bottle between the two of us. And the problem is the water sources around here, uh, all the comments on the Gut Hook app that we use to find our water sources say not to drink it, that it's contaminated because we have all this farmland for like a five mile stretch. So we heard that there's a road crossing up here. And if we go 0.2 miles off trail or something, there's a garden center that is hiker friendly and will let hikers use their spigot out back and there's also an antique store that will sell water to us. So we're hoping one of those options will work. Other than that, it seems like a nice day. It was a very active night last night. <laughs> there's a pack of coyotes that were at it all night running yeah. around. You could hear them howling. They got really close. They uh, were freaking me out. Also, I woke up around one because I heard a cow mooing and I think a cow got loose from a local pasture and shortly after hearing a cow mooing nearby and walking through the woods uh, I heard several people and I said that flashlights and I saw some lights flashing and it's like they were trying to find the missing cow so it was a very eventful night not a very restful one but and we're part of the experience of being out here. All right, so this car park here called the Autobahn Service let us fill up two water bottles with their um, waiting room bubbler water. I say, if we have a, if you have a spigot, we'll just use that. We have a filter. And she said, no, you take this stuff. So thank you, Autobahn lady. the birds on camera because they are singing singing us a nice morning song Looks like we have a railroad ahead railroad crossing It's a little windy. Clouds are looking ominous. They storm on us. Well, nobody coming from that way. And 
Nobody coming from that way. I guess we can cross. Trail magic, our first trail magic of our adventure. Someone left these water gallons here. It was very nice because there's a stretch where there's no water and clearly someone is knowledgeable enough uh, to leave water here for the hikers coming through this section. So we're gonna fill up our bottles. Little road walking. Crossing over the Housatonic River. Look at all the yellows. It's beautiful. Aaron's making her PB and J over here. I'm about to perform surgery on my PB and J. We need stitches. The bread had an accident going up the mountain. <laughs> so gonna taste good. <laughs> yes, it is. Just put the broken part on top. It should work. I think so. All right, watch, watch Aaron's creative methodology here. So I put all this jam in this baggie and I just snipped off the end and it's like you know when you're making like cupcakes or cake or something and you yep. you put the frosting on top well good job I made something like that this morning that's <laughs> disgusting I'm trying to eat here today's been fun uh -huh. we are climbing an unknown mountain that or an unnamed, unnamed. mountain you can tell I'm tired unnamed mountain uh, and then we probably only have a couple more miles to the shelter uh, we met two through hikers who were southbound which I was not expecting uh, no. typically southbound through hikers start in July uh, the first guy we met actually started a month ago uh, and so he's cruising to make it from Katahdin down here. Um, so that was really impressive. And then we met uh, another lady who uh, was probably pr pushed in her 60s. Um, she was who was flip flopping. So she started down south, did some hiking there. And then she went up north and started coming back down. And she told us she had an. Uh, an injury in Vermont and had to get off the trail for a month. Yep. And then she got back on the trail and she is headed southbound. She's trying to do as much as she can before winter sets in. So hopefully the whole thing we're rooting for. Her.
Tom Winter Shelter, you can see it down there. It's gonna be our home for the night. There is a loft up here. And then there's also some bunks to sleep in. And we've got picnic table. And looks like there's a fire pit. I guess mass lets you have fires. And over in here, there's this open tenting site. Sparkles, bringing all of Going our to set up camp. <laughs> bringing all of our uh, tent stuff, sleeping bags, sleeping pads, clothes, etc., to our tent over there. It looks like Greg is grabbing us some water here. Also murky. The verdict is it looks a little murky. Let's check it out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely looks a little murky. Yeah, it's clean. Yeah. So this is how we filter our water. We use the Sawyer, and the dirty water goes on this end, and then the clean water comes out this end. So we have our bladders that we fill up, and then we filter them into water bottles. And as crazy as it sounds, you can tell this water looks really, really murky and it's coming out a little more uh, clear than it went in. And if we were ever wondering if a water source was maybe a little questionable, we would of course. Uh, we also brought some water filtration tablets with us. We dropped that in the bottle and it takes about four hours to clean the water. This pocket stove burns pretty well. Sure it is. Uh, maybe a, to a turkey vulture? Yeah. All right, so we just finished dinner and we packed all of our food and all of our smellables, toothpaste, dish soap, food, all that into these blue bags and we're going to put them in this bear box. So first you have to, so they all always have a, some sort of latch or lock that you have to unhook, which clearly I I'm going to do one-handed, all right, and then once that's undone, you can lift the box. And so you can see what's inside of a bear box. It's just basically like a like a big metal chest, similar that you know people might use for tools or storage. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure, you want to give it a quick inspection to make sure there's no holes in the bottom, because uh, you don't want mice uh, to come in. So you could actually... Uh, see down there, or oh, maybe you can't in the right corner, there was a hole that somebody put a stick through it just to prevent any mice from coming up because they can literally come up in the smallest of holes. So, and then we're just dropping it in. And just as yet another uh, safety mechanism on this side of the bear box, they are always chained to a tree. Mm, let's um, see that. So, uh, you know, I think that'd be a pretty big accomplishment if a bear was able to walk away with this box. Uh, <laughs> but I think maybe more for people so they don't take it uh, and bring it home. So. Huh. And that's using a bear box.